Welcome back. This is a news check and we are looking at matters uh, obstetric a fistula wow. over 3,000 and just an estimate 3,000 women are affected by this condition but only 7.5 percent get the treatment and uh, the therapy that they should well yesterday we were commemorating world um, international, international day. Uh, mm -hmm. obstetric day uh, obstetric fistula day mm -hmm. and the clarion call was to end it but where are we as a country? I'm now joined by Sharon Correll, who is the founder of Fistula Foundation. Karibu sana. Asante. In a nutshell, what exactly do you do at Fistula Foundation? Um, thank you so much for the invite. Karibu. And yes, we I have a foundation, Save a Woman Fistula mm. Foundation. And our foundation is <coughs> basically a beacon of hope for women and girls who are leaking urine and feces um, as a result of childbirth, as a result of early marriages, as a result of FGM and even defilement or rape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we really, really emphasize on obstetric fistula because um, it's more prone. Most women who give birth are the ones who are prone to fistula. And yeah, so we, what we do, we give psychosocial support from our survivor's point of view because I had fistula, I understand what these women are going through. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we try and, you know, work with them and, and, to, and just share because um, the whole experience is very traumatic. Yeah, and then there's a lot of stigma associated with the condition as well. Then apart from that also, from a lawyer's point of view, because I am a lawyer, mm -hmm. we're also looking at legislation because you don't have a fistula act or any legislative policies pertaining fistula. Mm -hmm. So we are here yeah, to see whether we, if we can partner with the correct stakeholders, we can mm -hmm. be able to move and do a fistula act. And then again, the reproductive health bill, the mm -hmm. Honorable Susan Kikas chapter, that is the Senate level, has no provision for fistula. So again, we need to look into that and see that, um, you know, we have a provision for fistula even within the reproductive health bill, moving on to an act of parliament. Yes. And, and uh, it's a good thing that um, <coughs> you are speaking from somebody who had had the same same experience. There's a lot of stigma and mm. lack of information. How did you deal with that? Well, uh, to be very honest, uh, when I had the condition, um, I, d I noticed I was, I was releasing stool from my vagina and, mm. you know, uncontrollable leakage of urine. Mm. I, was, I was in shock. I, you know, I actually got panic attacks because it's not normal. At some point, I thought I had gone crazy, like a postnatal depression like um, anxiety, you know, lots of pressure because initially I was in hospital for about 21 days. Uh, my son was admitted for 21 days. So there's so much, as, I, as I'm, when you have a small baby and uh, when a baby is battling his life and all that. Then, of course, going back home and he trying to develop his, you know, breastfeed, his immunity back is when I realized, what? I actually do have fistula. And I remember about six weeks after I called my sister-in-law and I told her, you know what, this is it. And she's a nurse in, in Kenyatta. So she told me, check out one of the media stations have advertisements going on, on camps that are ongoing. Mm -hmm. So I actually did check out and I went and I was diagnosed with rectal vaginal fistula, mm -hmm. fourth degree tear. That's actually the worst form of fistula. Wow. Yeah. Well, at least you live to tell this tale. Yes. Now, there's a lot of um, a, a poverty mm. in Kenya and yeah. our health system is not the best so to speak yeah. but there is hope and treatment for these people mm, where yes. do they get help and maybe can you give a quantifiable amount on how much one can spend just mm. like we have kidneys now we are mm. doing transplants here in Kenya do we have enough or sufficient facilities to cater for these women? Mm. Well, the reality on the ground is that, yes, indeed, fistula is really rampant in the, in the, in the poor areas, the marginalized areas, areas, areas where women cannot properly access or access proper healthcare services. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, yes, on that, but again, fistula happens to any woman of childbearing age. You can imagine I'm an elite, I'm a lawyer gave birth in the city, one of the leading hospitals in this country, and yet I have fistula. Mm -hmm. So it clearly shows that it, it cuts across the social status. Mm -hmm. However, yes, the Indian women are more prone to fistula, and uh, the reality is that so many women, and, and that roughly 13,000 women are reported to have had fistula and wow. gotten surgeries. 13,000. The number is quite high. Oh, yes. And uh -huh. so, so, so you can imagine the number who don't even have, you know, radio, TV, who probably don't can access social media and, the, and YouTube and all that to find out where they can reach out for help. So there are many women who have fistula. Um, roughly one woman in a hundred births have fistula. Wow. Yeah. And uh, you, you can imagine now if we go to an area where one woman is in a hundred have fistula, their numbers are, are quite high mm -hmm. and they're still suffering in silence. Uh, to be able to get surgery for fistula, if on an estimate you'll spend about 300,000 
However, mm -hmm. in this country, it has stakeholders in, together with the Ministry of Health who have come in to support free camps. Yeah, that they mm -hmm. do camps and mm -hmm. they offer free, uh, free fistula surgeries. <coughs> yeah. And talking about free camps, I'm looking at this is a condition that affects uh, women of uh, childbearing age. Mm -hmm. And can we have we have health institutions in each and every county can we have a blended system i'm, I'm talking a, a, a practical example mm. uh, a, a company like elgon kenya mm. is blending fertilizer mm. as opposed to the dap here npk here cn here they are blending fertilizer so that the farmer can benefit from all the macronutrients in a fertilizer mm. so question is can we do the same thing mm. in our maternal health care systems where in every uh, maternal hospital we have at least one in each county that will be able to cater for women in the 47 counties. Because I'm quite mm. sure we do not have these centers mm. in these 47 counties. Mm. The reality on the ground is that in this country we only have five fistula surgeons. And uh, sadly the gynecologists are not trained for fistula, gynecologists are not trained to do fistula work. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that um, most of these gynecologists were in the, in the county hospitals. Are not are not good at it. They don't. They cannot even be able to detect a fistula after birth. Mm. So that's when you'll find that a woman living with fistula for seven years, for fourteen, for thirty-six, for forty, and, and the like. Um, however, the government should come in to to train. Yeah, this to, you know provide training for the uh, probably sponsor the, the training for for the gainers from mm. the fistula surgeons themselves, and ensure that they are disseminated in the county level in every county hospital. We have a fistula surgeon. Immediately, a woman delivers. In the county hospital, they detect fistula, they do repair, so that in a way of curbing fistula, putting an end to, to fistula. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, there's an issue of creating awareness, because it's one mm -hmm. thing again to know you even have fistula. I didn't know I had fistula, I've gone to law school. You can imagine, and we, we are, I'm working right now, and, and here I am, I'm licking urine and feces, no clue about, about fistula. How about the woman in the, in the interior yes. who has no clue, who's not going to school, who has no clue what, what they're going through? It's, it, it, it's, it's a bit tricky. So there's, there's need to have fistula conversations like we are doing right now in the media from mm. time to time so that we normalize the condition, that we normalize cancer, and also have women come out boldly and say that they have the problem and be willing to get assistance, and the only assistance is corrective surgery. There's an and uh, there's, there's a perception that um, anyone licking urine and feces uncontrollably has been bewitched. Mm -hmm. There's some, some issue of um, there's yeah, a problem. There's a lot of that. stigma yes. around it. Yeah, what is it? You know, because anything affiliated to urine and feces is very mm -hmm. sensitive. You're yeah. dirty, you're unkempt, mm -hmm. you're, you're poor in hygiene. I mean, so many things in the workplace. The only more smelling you would wonder, don't you clean well? Don't you take a bath? Mm -hmm. But in the real sense, a person could be having fistula. Yeah. Yeah. So and and, and uh, <coughs> uh, because of the interest of time, how can one reach out, and especially now that you are one of the advocates, and not only law, but you're advocating f to ensure that women get help. Yeah. How can a woman get help? And what is your foundation doing in particular to ensure that we change this narrative? Yeah. Um, as a foundation, we are there to create awareness, Christina. And we are also there very, very, very hand in hand and very, very, very in touch with women who are living and affected by fistula. Mm -hmm. um, there are women, yes, who are living with fistula right now and they need corrective surgery. However, there are those who have got, got a corrective surgery, but still um, may not be in a position to go back to their normalcy because, one, the surgery was not successful, so they mm -hmm. keep having, uh, you know, licking urine and fist at the same time. Mm -hmm. Again, others even feel like there's the, the failed surgeries because they're not able to get intimate with their spouses. The surgery was done that it was too intense as per the norm of the, the, the vagina. So there's, there's need to keep talking about this issue and being able to encourage us as women to, uh, to come more boldly and say that you have a problem. And even as you heal as well after surgery, there's also a need for psychosocial support. And then again, anybody in your space who's licking urine and feces is not that you're unkempt. Reach out to them and tell them they could be having a condition that can be, can be treated mm. uh, through corrective surgery. You are a lawyer. As we wind up, <coughs> what are you doing to ensure that we have policies or laws that will help all those women who are suffering each and every year? And again, how can a woman reach out to you in particular? Okay. Mm. So, uh, reaching out to me, please reach out to my social media, media pages, mm. Sharon Korir on Facebook, um, Sharon Korir uh, uh, Fistula Champion on Twitter, Sharon Korir Fistula Champion on, on Instagram, and just DM me, do me a text on, on my social media pages, or as well, they can reach out to KBC and they can, you guys can give us feedback. Mm. Um, and then also, um, as a lawyer, mm. 
uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are really in the process of seeking partnerships even with organizations that we can do a public interest in the litigation case and we can see right, right on the ground which woman, which woman who's leaking union pieces that need to be held because mm -hmm. Article 43 of the Constitution is very clear on proper attainable standards of health care and the reality is women are not getting that in the, on the ground. So we need to really, really look at how we can be able to do this so that we can support our women and then also because I think we're, because we're still in an election phase, uh, mm -hmm. when this is all done and we're back to this norm, we can still go back and readdress the bill that Honorable Susan Keika is championing <coughs> on, on fiscal and see how we can be able to do a memo or amend on the same to ensure that we we, 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 we have our women represented because we matter. Yes. All women living and affected by fistula matter. In 30 seconds, final words. Yes. Ah, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, in 30 seconds, I would like to appreciate all, all uh, KBC for having me. Uh, it's, it's a privilege. Uh, secondly, we are having uh, uh, a an first anniversary of Save a Woman Priscilla Foundation at the Hill Park Hotel um, on, the fr on Friday, the 27th, from 6 to 9 p.m. You're all welcome. Uh, for the online viewers, we'll watch our pages. We'll be having the uh, links that are passed on virtual, mm -hmm. in our YouTube channel, and also on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, and any woman, woman leaking urine and feces, there's hope. So share, share, tell somebody, reach out to us, get help, and life will go back to normalcy. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sharon Corilla. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but um, I'm sure we can get some more time. This is something that we need to discuss yes, and ensure so that uh, women around Kenya and the region are able to be helped. Sharon Corilla, uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, she is championing the course and she actually has her own foundation and kindly follow her up and if you have somebody who has this issue you know there is hope thank you so much my name is ben Troenjo. unfortunately we are out of time now giving rise to kruzi mashinani and tamrini thank you so much for watching let's continue this conversation on social media and carol njoroge has been our sign language interpreter for this live show have a blessed afternoon yeah, thank you. <laughs>